Let's analyze the mechanism of growth. Well, the idea is very simple. I would, uh, let's say this is our asset, our black box at point zero. And then there is some profit made in year one. I'll put it here. And this is EPS one. So this is earnings per share. And this amount, many things can happen to this amount. And uh, the first case, we will put it like uh, case one. All EPS1 is paid out as dividend one. Then we know the answer, then the price of the stock will be dividend one, which is the same as EPS1, divided by R, where R is the rate of return here. But see what happens. If we paid that all out, then this box at point one becomes exactly the same as it was at point zero. So this is the case of no growth. Therefore, we can say that for no growth, this P sub zero is equal to EPS one divided by R. That's what we wanted to find. Well, in order to proceed with some more interesting cases, we have to make some further assumptions. Let's say that we identify that the return on equity is EPS1 divided by book equity per share. So basically we say that this box has constant cash generating capacity. If the box is like this, then it creates this one. If the box would be twice that, then EPS would be also twice the one put here. So this is the internal uh, capacity of uh, cash flow generation. We will put that as constant. Now, now we can move on to the more interesting case too, in which we can say that EPS1 can be used in two ways. Well, part of that can be paid out as dividend one, and part of that can be reinvested as investment in one. And if we divided that by EPS1, then these are very well-known quotients. That's called payout rate. And that's called the plowback rate. And again, if we put these constant, then we can analyze the case of a constant growth. Well, strictly speaking, there may be some other cases. Let's analyze that too. We can think about case three that, let's say, plowback is not constant. So basically, this is the most realistic case. Then every year you reinvest a, a different portion of your EPS. And then finally, to this we can add case four, which is borrowing. Because oftentimes, we would like to invest more than we have. So not only do we invest, reinvest all EPS1, but we also borrow. And in this case, why do we borrow? Because we believe that the return on uh, our investment is greater than the cost of borrowing. And therefore, using borrowed money, we are able to create more value. Now, in what follows, we go back to case two and analyze this, because this is the most interesting. So we hold everything constant. And then if G is the growth rate, and that's actually the growth rate of book equity per share, then 
it can be shown that G is equal to return on equity times the plowback. Well, clearly, we are back to the Gordon's formula because if this is constant, this is constant, then this is constant too. So we are now close to the analysis of what's going on here on the basis of uh, these things held constant. But in order to proceed with that, we will uh, go with a numeric example that although seems to be quite trivial, but actually will equip us with a very powerful tool in analyzing not only this sort of trivial case two, but in the future also these more interesting cases three and four. That all in the next episode.